Hi everyone, thank you all for coming. My name is Maggie Donaldson. I'm a graduate student here in journalism and French studies. Um, and so we're here to honor the Charlie Hebdo um, editor-in-chief, Gérard um, Biard, and um, Jean-Baptiste Torre, the film critic. And they're here to accept an award from Penn. Suzanne Nussel is their executive director. And then we have Ed Berenson, who's going to give a short presentation right now. He's the director of the Institute of French Studies here at NYU. Good morning, everybody. Everybody hear me okay? OK. So what I'd like to do briefly is to put Charlie Hebdo in a longer French tradition of satire and of irreverent humor. So after the, the, the terrible events in Paris in January that we all know about, American commentators tried in vain to find US equivalents to Charlie Hebdo, which is a journal that has long billed itself as bête et méchant, stupid and nasty. And so people raised the idea that, well, Mad Magazine is a little bit like, like Charlie Hebdo. And that's a wonderful tribute, I think, that Mad Magazine published to those murdered on January 7th. But the patriotic imagery and the kind of decorousness of that, of that image is something that I think the, the editors and, and, and writers and cartoonists for Charlie Hebdo would have mocked mercilessly. And people have mentioned Colbert and, and John Stewart, but I think they can be bet, but, but not so Machel. I think probably the closest that we have to the kind of satirical mode that Charlie Hebdo represents is South Park and even more so the Book of Mormon, which if you've seen it, you know it's scatological, it's crudely sexual, it's vulgar, and it's gross. But the Book of Mormon has an underlying sincerity and a sympathy to religious belief and religious narratives that the Charlie Hebdo cartoonist would also, I think, mercilessly mock. And so it seems to me that Charlie Hebdo may well be unique. And it unquestionably represents something distinctive in French culture, like it or not. And so in adopting the slogan, Je suis Charlie, I am Charlie, many people in France demonstrated, however obliquely, that those who gunned down the editors and writers and cartoonists for Charlie Hebdo had taken aim at one of the things that makes France French. And among those things is an extreme uh, irreverence, kind of hostility towards authority, and also an intense version of laïcité, that untranslatable French word that roughly means secularism on steroids. <laughs> laïcité is the French policy of keeping religion out of public discourse and out of the public life. And don't have time to get into this now, maybe we can into later in the discussion, but I actually don't think that laïcité completely succeeds in taking religion out of public discourse and public life. And what we really get in French laïcité is a secularized version of French Catholicism, which is one reason why a fair number of French Muslims have a problem with the invocation of laïcité, that is French secularism. And so since really the, the old regime France has shown a, a kind of a version of satire which is crude, vulgar, and downright offensive. Get to that slide in a second. And that tradition goes all the way back to Voltaire, who in his philosophical dictionary can be incredibly blasphemous. And here's what he says, among other things, in his entry in the philosophical dictionary on transubstantiation. He says, Quoting him, Catholics are people who eat and drink their God. Catholics are people who piss and shit their God. Voltaire wrote a play 
called Mohammed, about Mohammed, and in that play, which was banned after three performances in the middle of the 18th century, he presented Mohammed as a man motivated by lust and power, a monster, a savage. And every time that there's been an effort to, to do that play, even readings of the play, there have been problems. And Voltaire, we should remember, is the guy who famously said that he had prayed to God just once in his life. Oh Lord, make my enemies ridiculous. And God granted my prayer. Now we can see this French irreverence toward authority in this pornographic image from the middle of the 18th century. And many of you know Robert Darnton from Harvard is the, the main US historian who's worked on French pornography. And you probably can't see the, the caption down there, but it says, bravo, bravo, la reine se pénètre de la patrie. <coughs> Literally translated would be, the queen is penetrated by the fatherland. A better, more decorous translation would, would be that the queen is imbued with the spirit of the fatherland, but you, <clears throat> you, you get the idea. Now, moving on to the 19th century, you have these famous images of King Louis, the, Louis Philippe from the Philippe's or Philippon's caricatures from the, the 1930s, and they famously present the king's face as gradually morphing into the shape of a pear. And from then on, the, the actual form of the king disappears, and there he is, an empty face, shaped like a pear, cloaking under him all the collaborators of his regime. Things got in really intense in French satire, cartooning satire toward the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century with these savagely anti-Catholic drawings. They don't need very much explanation, the, the Vatican is dripping blood and uh, choking a man who is barfing out coins. And um, getting back to the irreverence toward authority, sometimes other people's authorities, this is a caricature meant to condemn the Boer War of 1898 to 1902, and it has uh, Albion's rear end taking the shape of King Edward VII's face. <laughs> Skipping ahead to the middle of the 20th century and the founding of Charlie Hebdo's predecessor called Lebdo Arakiri, founded in 1960. And um, it made the transition through May of 1968. And in one of its most infamous covers in November 1970, after the death of President Charles de Gaulle, uh, Arakiri coldly, insolently, announced the death of the president by suggesting that it paled in comparison with a recent fire in a discotheque that had taken the lives of more than 40 young people. This insolence, this les majesty, evoked outrage, and the French government banned Arakiri from the newsstands. And this is where we get the birth of Charlie Hebdo, which shortly after it replaced Arakiri, and the name I think, and maybe we can be corrected, refers both to Charlie de Gaulle and to Charlie Brown, whose creator, Charles M. Schultz, the Arrow Curie people admired. Now, when Charlie Hebdo took Arrow Curie's place, its editors promised the same kind of merciless post May 68, but in a long tradition, takedowns of religious authority figures and other of France's sacred cows. It is a magazine that would be deliberately irresponsible, even inflammatory. And so you've got the fire and the water and the oil. This is the irresponsible journal, and the responsible one is black. And so they went out with this, this cover. And here is how Francois Cavana, the founder of Eric Curie and uh, one of the founders of Charlie Hebdo. This is how he explained Charlie Hebdo's ethos, quoting him, nothing is sacred, not the Jewish martyrs of the Holocaust, not even people starving of hunger. Laugh at everything ferociously. 
bitterly to exercise the old monsters. It is precisely about the worst things that you should laugh the loudest. And shortly after this pronouncement, Cabu, one of the cartoonists who was murdered on January 7th, he declared at Charlie Hebdo, we try to push back the limits of good taste, which is a bourgeois notion we couldn't care less about. And then after January 7th, Adam Gopnik writing in the, the New Yorker and explaining to Amer American readers the ethos of Charlie Hebdo, Gopnik wrote, the magazine is offensive to Jews, offensive to Muslims, offensive to Catholics, offensive to feminists, offensive to the right and to the left, while being aligned with the left, offensive to everybody equally. Now, not everyone would agree with Gopnik that Charlie Hebdo was offensive to everyone equally. Some think its editors have become obsessed with Islam and obsessed in a way that gives aid and comfort to France's nastiest Islamophobes on the extreme right. But here's how Charlie Hebdo's murder, murdered cartoonist Charb, Stéphane Charbonnier, responded to this charge. He responded by vowing to continue his campaign of mockery, quote, until Islam is just as banal as Catholicism. And then Sharb added that Charlie Hebdo, for all its criticism of Islam and Muslims, has hardly been soft on Catholics and Jews. And <clears throat> here you see some examples, and some of them are pretty offensive, and basically down the shitter with all religions, and you've got the the three sacred texts on rolls of toilet paper. And here there's an <clears throat> unsubtle reference to the controversy over wearing young girls, the ban of young girls wearing the head scarf in the, in the schools. And uh, we should have the different uh, representatives of the three main religious groups saying that we should veil Charlie Hebdo. And when it comes to Jews here, Charlie Hebdo, this is one of its trademark things. It mobilizes anti-Semitic or racist stereotypes to criticize the people who use those stereotypes. And so here you have an editor from Charlie Hebdo using the vulgar anti-Semitic language of, uh, of Jew, against Jews, Dupin, sort of dirty Jew, get out your, your dirty Jews. And then what are, the, what are the Jews who have been expelled from the Editorship say, well, without, without us, the level of the magazine is going to go down. And here's a particularly intense one. This is after a, a series of bombings of synagogues, and the cover says, is it prudent to build nuclear power plants next to synagogues? Now, the <clears throat> magazine, of course, did pay, has paid quite a bit of attention to Islam, but in a way that's fairly complicated, I think. In early 2006, Charlie Hebdo reprinted the 12 caricatures of Mohammed that had been originally published in a Danish newspaper, but Charlie Hebdo put its own stamp on this affair with this cover. And this cover became one of the most popular ones in the history of the journal until, until alas, the cover that was published in mid-January of this year. Now, this cover, I think, is méchant that, that is sort of nasty in more ways than one, because it doesn't exactly show Mohammed's likeness, because it has the prophet covering his face in his hands. And it clearly enlists the prophet against the Islamists who are acting in his name. So the editors of Charlie Hebdo then distinguish between a good Islam and a bad one, between a reasonable, long-suffering Mohammed and the fanatics causing him so much pain. And so the transition Mohammed is overwhelmed by the fundamentalists, and then the caption then, it's tough to be loved by assholes. Call assholes is a word that appears fairly often in Charlie Hebdo. Now, Several of the establishment Muslim organizations sued Charlie Hebdo, Hebdo for this cartoon on grounds that it incited racial hatred, which is explicitly prohibited by French law. 
and maybe we can get into this later, but French law concerning speech is really different from the laws in this country that we're used to. It's a complicated one, and French law bans an awful lot of forms of free speech. And this is something also that I think has created problems in France, because it's not always clear what the line is between what's permitted and what isn't. Charlie Hebdo, fortunately in my view, won virtually all the lawsuits against it on grounds of free speech, but then there are people in, in France like the anti-Semitic comedian, Dieu Donné, who was clapped in jail after making some remarks that were deemed to violate the laws that against hate speech. So complicated situation. Now, through all this, Charlie Hebdo has in fact continued to publish images of Mohammed, sometimes fairly gratuitous ones. And here it's, it's saying they, they've retitled the magazine Sharia Hebdo. And, and um, it says a hundred lashes if you aren't, if you don't die laughing. And this one I think is, is, is pretty profound and it, and it, and it shows a, a, an interesting ambiguity. And so it says if Mohammed came back, were to come back, and again the, the meaning is unsubtle, Mohammed would be murdered by those who speak in his name. And I think, and I'd be really interested in hearing what uh, the two people from Charlie Hebdo have to say about this. And here is that famous cover now published in about seven million copies, which is incredibly expensive if you want to buy it on eBay. And what it shows is a sad conciliatory Mohammed who appears perhaps that's the question, who appears perhaps to speak for the Charlie Hebdo survivors in forgiving the authors of the attack. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. And so then just before we jump into the conversation, we wanted to say that um, as you probably all know, this is part of the World Voices Festival for which there's an award ceremony tonight. Um, and there's been some controversy surrounding that, um, the distribution of this award and the, that they're giving it to Charlie Hebdo. Um, and so we had invited some of the authors who were involved in um, opting out of the ceremony to be on this panel today, and I'm just gonna read you their response. So, the colleagues of Biarque and Torre were victims of an inexcusable, inexcusable crime, and they deserve to be treated with the respect one offers to people who are recently bereaved, whatever one might think about their work. We think the panel on Tuesday should be one in which an audience has the opportunity to get to know Biarque and Torre and to hear their view of Charlie Hebdo. And we don't think you need to try to find someone who will speak in opposition to them. So that was just. So then just to start, I'd like to hear maybe from you two, like your reaction to Ed's presentation and kind of how your publication fits into this long history of satire in France. And what makes it so uniquely French? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if, if I um, sometimes miss words in, uh, in English because it's not my language. Uh, I try to do as clear as possible. Uh, I must uh, assure you that we don't eat children <laughs> and uh, we don't eat believers <laughs> ever. And um, one thing I must add uh, about this uh, presentation is uh, the political uh, aspect of Charlie Hebdo. Uh, since the 60s, Charlie Hebdo has, has always, be, uh, always been um, satirical, of course, but also political uh, newspaper and uh, fighting uh, against racism, uh, fighting against all discriminations, uh, discriminations uh, against uh, minorities, against uh, women, against gay people, uh, against um, uh, 
uh, weak people, uh, socially weak people, um, we poor people, and uh, we uh, always fight the uh, right wing and the extreme right wing uh, even more than uh, Catholics or uh, uh, even more than religions. Uh, we, we, we have nothing against religion. Uh, we fight against uh, a political use of uh, religions. That's not the same thing. Uh, I personally think that uh, if you are a believer, if I were a believer, I uh, wouldn't accept that someone uh, speak about my feelings. To me, to believe is to feel something. If someone feel, it is, if someone speaks about my feeling, I, I, I will tell you. But what do you know about my feelings? You can, you can tell what, uh, what I deeply think, what, what I deeply believe. Uh, to me, it's important uh, to say uh, to, 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 to that you remind. That uh, this, if you want to continue. Uh, um, first of all, your presentation was wonderful. I know I have to say that huh, you agree with yes. me and uh, complete. But we and, don't uh, eat children. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> me, uh, I'm still anyway. Uh, wait, no, it's a very good presentation. You, you eat children, and, and very, absolutely. <laughs> but uh, but this is my private space, you know. Okay. It's not about <laughs> laicity and uh, like things like that, uh, but uh, I, I think that uh, what's very interesting in your in your um, presentation is first the idea that Charlie Hebdo uh, is a uh, part of a very long French tradition. That's first thing very important, and I uh, to know. I mean, when you are talking about Charlie Hebdo, whatever you like it or not, and uh, you are absolutely free <laughs> to dislike Charlie Hebdo, to be offended by Charlie Hebdo, but you are free too to not buy Charlie Hebdo. I mean, you know, in France, some people are not uh, 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 forced to buy Charlie Hebdo. Uh, you know, even the government don't pull a gun on the, the head of the, the people and say you have now from now from January 7, it's an obligation to buy Charlie Hebdo. Huh? Uh, gosh, as we, you say in, in English, uh, it's uh, it's possible to not read Charlie Hebdo. I mean, uh, I don't like soccer, for example. It's boring me. I think it's for stupid people. It's just my belief. <laughs> but I am not forced to buy magazine about soccer. It's offending me to see large cover on, uh, with uh, soccer uh, uh, people, you know, in, in the wall of Paris. That's offending me, for example. For my brain, I think it's very bad, you know. <laughs> and I, I have children. I mean, I have children, and I, I, I tell to them that. Uh, uh, Please don't look at this cover, you know. <laughs> don't look at uh, Ibrahimovic or Lionel Messi. It's horrible because I, I know the name of this guy. I would like to have more room to more intelligent content, but that's the problem of publicity. Uh, that's very important because you don't have to buy Charlie Hebdo. That's something, you know. Um, you will always find someone uh, who is offending by something you say and uh, an article, a cartoon, and, and so on. So if you're starting to, uh, to think about the people who are offending but what you are doing, uh, you have to stop right now. You know, you don't take a mic, <coughs> you don't take your pen, you don't draw any cartoon, because you always find some uh, very sensitive people, and sometimes some very, uh, very, uh, very stupid people, sometimes some also, and you have a lot of also in France, like in the US, I guess. So <laughs> what I, can I say? I mean, it's uh, um, the question, there is no safe critic. And one of the main task, purpose, and uh, to, uh, of Charlie Hebdo is to, uh, to, you said irreverence is true, insolence is true, but it's to make critics, you know, and even of ourselves, yes. and we have a lot of debates uh, um, uh, inside the redaction, the, the, um, uh, among the staff members, sometimes we are not agree at all with some, uh, some cartoons, with some articles, and the last thing, because before pursuing the, the, the discussion, is that in Charlie Hebdo is not only cartoon, you know. Uh, you have cartoons and you have articles. But the reason all this uh, huge uh, debate uh, start and, uh, the, and the reason we are here, sitting here with you, is because of the cartoon. 
It's uh, sad to say, but uh, people don't read article, finally. In French, I hope so. I hope they, they, they read article. But uh, outside French, you know, all this controversy uh, is, um, is based on the cartoons, you know, about the images. And that brings maybe us to another subject, is uh, the quality of our interpretation. You know, if you see in the right way, I mean in a fair way, uh, a, a lot of uh, cartoons Charlie Hebdo has published, but it's the same thing with the New Yorker and uh, all the, all the ma other magazines. Um, if you make the effort, you know, to understand, really understand what is uh, drawn, what is cartoon about, you won't be offended, you know. I think it's... It's a question of intelligence, more than a question of uh, pushing the limit and to be provocative. You know, it's a, the free provocation is not very interesting, you know. So if you provoke somebody, if you provoke an institution, if you're pro provoking a state or, or a group of members, it's to make them think harder. I think it's that the, the main goal. You have to be a little more intelligent after a cartoon than before, you know. It's not, the question is not the provocation, you know, I think. But maybe now that I wonder, now that you have this international attention already, you're in the spotlight, does that change at all how you perceive your audience and maybe how they, people who aren't, haven't grown up in this tradition might not understand? Yes, uh, of course, but we live in a globalized world. So uh, each, uh, not on, it's, it's not only available for journalists or a cartoonist. Uh, if you write uh, something on Twitter or on Facebook, everyone, everyone in the world can read it. So it's, uh, it's the same thing for you. So uh, do, you, do you stop to, to write what you think or to, I don't think so. When I, uh, I I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not on Twitter, but uh, when I, I, I hear about Twitter, um, I don't think people stop uh, writing what they think uh, if we can uh, tell that thinking. But uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, if if you if you think before before write, writing an article or uh, make, making a cartoon that you are, are maybe uh, be offend, offensive for uh, someone, uh, someplace, uh, in s mm, another part of the world, uh, y you won't do nothing. Uh, you, you, you won't write, you, you won't draw, you, you, you won't even think. Uh, so uh, the, the, the goal maybe is to, uh, to make uh, thinking uh, uh, go all over the world, and uh, it's maybe to uh, to share opinions. Uh, the principle for me, the, the, the main, the main, uh, the main goal is uh, is uh, is debate. Is uh, may maybe uh, if this uh, kind of controversies uh, can. Uh, can can the, uh, provoke an, uh, a global debate? Uh, for me, it's it's okay. Uh, it's it's good to to debate. It's not good to kill people, even in Texas. And uh, so, <laughs> the th <laughs> the thing is, uh, the, the 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 people. Who, who, who commit this, these, these crimes don't want debate. Uh, in Amsterdam, it was not uh, it was not a contest. It was not. It was just a debate. Maybe maybe they wanted to kill people. Uh, they think they thought just like them. They had the same opinion, but they were here just to 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 have a discussion, to to have a debate, and uh, but they don't want to. They just want to impone their own opinions so it's not it's not about uh, it's not about religion it's about politics because when you're when you're a believer you don't want to impose your your uh, your your belief on others it's it's okay it's okay with you but uh, well uh, others have their own beliefs so i don't know if i'm clear enough but uh, <laughs> 
Um, okay, thank you. Kind of then turning to the current debate, I wonder, Suzanne, if you could talk a little bit about the award and why you have chosen Charlie Hebdo to receive this and the response that you guys have given. Sure, I mean, for us, looking at Charlie Hebdo uh, standing in this position where they really are kind of pushing the boundaries and kind of occupying a space that is precarious and dangerous because you're subject to misinterpretation, you're edgy, uh, you're deliberately uh, hitting at, maybe whether it's powerful targets or targets that have a great propensity to kind of uh, trigger a backlash, you know, that's the terrain that they operate in, and I think you laid it out well, that that's always been kind of a, a, a well-trod terrain in France and, and more so probably than here, but they've, they've been there and they've known for a long time that uh, they do so at their own peril. Back in 2011, their office was firebombed. Uh, their members of the staff who've been on the Al-Qaeda top 10 list. And it's, to us, continuing to stake out that territory is brave. It's something that most of us, you know, frankly would want no part of because uh, it's, it's frightening, and uh, you know, it just seems like it's probably not worth it from a, a safety standpoint, and also from a kind of reputational standpoint to kind of mix it up on so many of these issues and trigger so much backlash from so many. And so I think it's, it's not a bad thing that most of us don't want to do that. I think if we all did that, it would be very, very hard to live together. But it's important that some people occupy that space and kind of hold it for the rest of us so that if we ever need to say something that is uh, not widely accepted, that seems provocative, that goes against the conventional wisdom, you know, that space is, so, is still open to us. We can go out there and we're free to say it. Uh, we don't accept the idea that the terrain for free speech can be shrunk through the barrel of a gun. We think that's a very dangerous proposition. And so in thinking about Charlie Hebdo, uh, Courage was really the word that came to mind. Their courage in going on after the firebombing in 2011 and then earlier this year after the attack on their staff. And what we've made clear is that this is not an award. It's not a literary award. It's not a merit award. It's not an award for the cartoons. You know, we haven't gone through the exercise of artistic uh, judgment on the cartoons themselves. But what we have concluded is that we really are quite firm that these do not constitute hate speech, that if you do understand them in context, uh, that it's quite clear they're satirical, uh, they target figures of power, icons of power in many different guises. Uh, you know, sometimes they're unsavory. I think what we've learned uh, over the last week or two uh, that's very clear is that people look at these cartoons through very different and very personal prisms. And what they see uh, up on the screen is very different. It evokes all sorts of things for us that may go back to our childhood, to uh, the groups or religions that we associate with. And those triggers are powerful and, and people have a reaction. And it's almost like the context has to sort of come chasing after the image. You know, the image is out there. The, the instinctive reaction is out there, and then maybe only over time, you know, you have an opportunity to think through a context and perhaps look at it differently. But I don't know if that necessarily even overrides the visceral reaction that some people have had. So I think that's worth understanding, and we certainly respect that there are different views on this that are uh, genuinely held. Uh, at Penn, we're an organization whose mission it is to defend free expression. We're a very broad and diverse organization by design. So we welcome this debate. I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing, you know, here in this country that we've catalyzed a huge debate on free expression that's involved people from all over the world. Um, I wonder then, on the flip side of that, I know there had been sort of an outpouring of support following the attacks. Um, and I wonder how it felt to all of a sudden be supported by maybe those figures who had 
you tried to offend maybe in the past, you know, like the Pope, for example, or Queen Elizabeth, I think, was another. Um, what was your reaction to, to sort of this, um, all of a sudden, they're on your side? Well, we, we, we felt in a strange world, you know. <laughs> Suddenly, the, 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 the things that uh, surprised me most was the, the, the bells of uh, Notre Dame, who, who rang for us. Wow, <laughs> uh, we don't ask for it. And um, regarding to the Pope, uh, I don't think he was uh, supporting us. Uh, I, I think he was uh, uh, he, he wanted to punch us in the face. If I uh, re understood that what he what it what he said, <laughs> so uh, uh, I didn't know about uh, Queen Elizabeth. Uh, Leaders had, it wasn't necessarily yes. that they were supporting the work, but they were showing solidarity. Um, okay. and I, so I, I heard about uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> he, well. Sus he subscribed to Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, yeah he subscribed. I, yes, I and, would uh, like to see, uh, I would like to have been there the first time Schwarzenegger received, you know, the, yes, the issue yes. of Charlie Hebdo. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> and, uh, I, I wish I, I was there. Yes. Yeah. No, uh, to, to be more serious, uh, it's... Um, it's serious because that's the truth of the event. It's as a kind of ridiculous thing. Just, yeah. just a second. I mean, when you say uh, everybody is Charlie, you have two ways of uh, react. Uh, first, you believe to that. You say, okay, that's true. Now everybody is Charlie. Uh, you can dream if you want. You can, you can take some drugs and say everybody is Charlie. Uh, but, of course, you know that there is an amount, uh, part of opportunity. I mean, everybody is Charlie. That don't, in fact, that don't mean anything. I mean, the truth of the event uh, will be uh, able to, to, uh, to perceive this truth in a few months. You know, uh, at one moment, everybody was, char was Charlie, of course. But uh, it, it could have been another thing, you know, uh, uh, if uh, uh, people uh, wearing some Nike uh, shoes and has been shot in a park, everybody's Nike, you know, everybody's shoes. Uh, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Uh, because that's, I, mean, I think that the, the most interesting thing is to wait a little bit, you know, and wait for September, or maybe next year, and, uh, and we'll see the, the way the, the, the debate is growing uh, in the US, but even in France, uh, and you can perceive um, uh, already the difference between the common, you know, speech of the, the people and the politics in January, and uh, the way the speech uh, change few weeks after weeks after weeks after weeks. Uh, and it, it's good because it's horrible to, uh, when you're surrounded by people who think all the same thing, you know? I think it's frightening. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm a movie critic and I have, have in mind this wonderful movie by Don Siegel, named in 1956, Invasion, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, you know? And uh, for me, uh, I am. When I see all the people saying the same thing, I always think about the body snatchers, you know? And uh, it's, so uh, that's the reason uh, we uh, were uh, happy to, to see uh, some of the people saying, just with Charlie, of course, but uh, we are not naive. Of mm -hmm. course, we are not naive. And maybe we, uh, we could make this, uh, you know, a, a second meeting in one or two years. I think the, uh, the, the things would be very, very different from now. Yeah. You wouldn't be doing your job. If everybody said it's just me, Charlie, six months from now, but I but I do think the the sentiment of of supporting and endorsing something that is deeply ingrained in French culture and that would be a terrible tragedy if, with the awful murders, also we were to lose that incredibly important satirical tradition that that you represent, and I, and I do think that that is something that that maybe will endure that 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 recognition of what, what Charlie Hebdo represents about French culture. And uh, yes, and maybe, and maybe some, uh, some values, some universal values, uh, because we, uh, uh, among, among the, 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 the things we stand, we stand up, uh, there are uh, human values, human rights, uh, universal rights, you know. And um, 
but uh, these rights, we can be uh, the only ones to, to support this right. Okay, uh, the, the most important thing we, we, we would like to, to tell, to, to, to say to the one who are really sincere, who are really Charlie, uh, uh, okay, you're Charlie, so uh, take, a, take, a, take a pencil, uh, take, a, take a pen, uh, take your voice and uh, stand up uh, for, for, for this right, for these values, for, uh, uh, because uh, they belong to everyone. They we're, not, we're not the owners. Of uh, this, uh, we're not the owners of uh, of uh, anti-racism, of uh, uh, of uh, secularism, of democracy, uh, of uh, non-violence. Uh, it's it's uh, it's for everyone on earth. So, uh, je suis Charlie, okay? So, do it. Um. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit more about how things have changed moving forward. What has been sort of this, the feeling um, when you sit down at your editorial meetings and has anything about your angle and maybe your approach to the, your satire changed? No, no, uh, because um, we, we, we are what we are. We can, we, can, uh, we can do nothing else but that we did all these years. Uh, Charlie Hebdo is a, sp is a very peculiar uh, newspaper. Uh, we are linked uh, by uh, some uh, some ideas, uh, some uh, uh, once again values, uh, and uh, above all uh, the uh, the will to uh, make people laugh and think. The both together, you know, you can't, you can't, uh, you, you, I think you can't think, really think, if you're not laughing, if you're not enjoying it. Uh, thinking uh, as not to be boring, you know. So, uh, that's, it, if, if you, if you should define what is Charlie Hebdo, is this thing, you know. Uh, laughing and thinking, uh, so it's we can't we can't stop we can we, we can't became serious we can't uh, we can't become became uh, okay um, it's it not it not means that we don't uh, we don't discuss when we every time we we publish a cartoon for each cartoon we publish. Uh, we don't publish it to just to do it. We we think about it. We discuss among us. It's it's a it's a collective decision. Uh, I'm not the only one who say, okay, this cartoon will do. This one no. Uh, when and uh, it's uh, even more true for w when it's a, a cartoon. We will make the cover. Uh, because the cover is what people see, so it must it must uh, be Charlie. Uh, if uh, if the the the, the only the, the only thing who is really Charlie is its cover, you know. What about you, Jean Baptiste? Has anything changed maybe about your creative process or expression? <laughs> He, don't, um, he doesn't create. Uh, I don't create anything, <laughs> you know, <laughs> except myself. No, I, I mean, uh, um, maybe the main danger, because we have all the people of working in Charlie Hebdo, and, the, and, it, and there is a, we have to say that there is a difference if you're a, a cartoonist or a writer. The, the, the main danger and the, the main threat is concerning the cartoonist, not the writers. Uh, again, I, I guess a lot of uh, terrorist people and the fundamentalists don't read, you know, exactly what we are. So they are looking at the images. That the, the cartoon is the main issue, in fact. It's the, what, the, the reason the cover is so important. Maybe just the cover. In, even the cartoons inside Charlie, but no, just the cover. They don't uh, open it. We, we should make just a one page magazine. We could, we could, well, <laughs> uh, it will be good. <laughs> 
but uh, I think the, um, the, the main danger, uh, except all the, the security problems, threat uh, we, we can have, of course, but uh, it's um, uh, the question of self-censorship. Uh, uh, because that's something uh, um, which uh, can affect us, but it's very difficult to know. At what moment, fi finally, a sort of uh, we and self-censorship uh, stroke you. And, uh, but it's also the case for all the, the, the common people. I mean, I feel quite uncomfortable with, with this question of uh, heroism, you know, bravery. I don't think that. I mean, events create people, you know, and I'm sure uh, most of you here, uh, if you have been put in a specific uh, uh, event, uh, you know, a very uh, imp uh, huge event, uh, disaster, uh, killing, uh, a lot of people, some of people, I don't know if it's, uh, if it's most of people, but some of the people um, um, uh, will, would have show courage, you know, uh, I don't like this idea of uh, being heroic because you're making, no, uh, absolutely not, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a human quality and you have some very human quality, very important uh, uh, in the heart of a car driver, you know, a baker, it's, uh, you don't have to be a cartoonist or writer, or, uh, you know, working in a satirist magazine to uh, show some bravery and some human quality. That's very important to me because uh, you have a lot of bad ships. Uh, even in satirical magazine, even in very uh, in left, you know what I mean. That's very important. And the second thing is that uh, this question of self censorship um, uh, maybe uh, it uh, um, could affect, you know, but the the the, the people, the entire people. I mean, um, when you have seen some uh, satirist and writer shot by two guys. Uh, with their guns uh, on this uh, on that day on January 7, uh, I guess uh, maybe we, we you will think twice before making another cartoon, um, uh, before uh, having this kind of speech, maybe before making the, this joke in the subway or maybe on the stage. You know, that's the main danger is right here. You know, it's an invisible change, changing. You know, uh, but maybe it's a more crucial one. Just, I mean, a word on that, you know, I think what's obvious is uh, you've always gone after icons, so the idea of being an icon is very uncomfortable, uh, and I, 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 I think you're right to hold on to your status, you know, that sort of rejects that. Um, it's quite fundamental to what you've always done, but I do think, I mean, for us, it comes in a larger context where we do see threats to the space for speech, and some of them are violent, uh, and immediate and terrifying, and some of them are much more kind of creeping and insidious. We see things like even, you know, out of the White House, just sort of a rele reluctance um, at their recent summit on extremism to, you know, talk about Muslim extremism, uh, to even mention the word. And, you know, you can kind of understand why, because it sort of, it, it seems provocative, and some people will react to that, and, you know, they don't want to stoke that, uh, and they want to get their message across without triggering a backlash. But that impulse, you know, if it goes too far, can really distort and kind of narrow the discourse. And so we do think people who are willing to position themselves into kind of not out of hate speech or venom or an agenda of destroying or taking down uh, a particular group, but rather, you know, out of a, a, a benign and worthy agenda, the agenda of satire that is nothing new uh, and has this long tradition, you know, being willing to kind of hold on to those iffy spaces at the margins that many of us kind of willingly cede because it's less of a headache to just cede it, we think that's pretty important. Okay, we're going to open it up for questions if you want to pass all your cards to the far ends of either aisle. The far ends. <laughs> and then maybe just while we wait, I wonder, perhaps Ed, you could speak to this a little bit as well, but I want to open it up to all of you. Um, the decision for many publications just following the attacks to publish the cartoons and the decision of many to self-censor those cartoons and not publish them, um, kind of your take on that, should they have, should they have not? I, I, I think they should have. And I, I, I think I'm a little ashamed, actually, that some of the major media outlets in, in this country did not publish 
some of these cartoons. And um, it's, 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 I, th I think some of the things that you just said helped uh, help us understand why that's true, fear of backlash and, and, and so on. But I think especially in, in the wake of what happened in January, it is the responsibility of journalists and uh, other people in media in the aftermath of those, of those events to express their solidarity with the people who lost their lives by showing solidarity with their, uh, the kind of expression that, that, that they used. And, and so I, I think it's really too bad that some of our media outlets did not want to publish those, those images. And the two of you did that. Um, how did it feel that some were still choosing to self-censor those images? And were you surprised that others maybe were not? Surprise, no, because uh, even in France, uh, some medias didn't. Uh, when we when we published for the first time the the, the cover you shown about Mahomet uh, with uh, his face in his hand, we published the, the we made this issue uh, because of one thing. Uh, we decide to publish the the Danish cartoons uh, because uh, a French a newspaper called François uh, published them, and the day after uh, the publication, the editor in chief was fired. So we decided to publish these cartoons with uh, explanations, with. Uh, with uh, uh, f comments, and uh, we made this cover, and we ask uh, all the others uh, uh, magazines uh, to publish these cartoons too. Only one did, L'Express. All the others say, oh yes, we, we agree, you, you're right, you're right, do it, do it, we don't. <laughs> okay, so uh, what is responsibility? Do you have, a, have an answer or an idea? What, what is this responsibility? What does it mean to you? It's turning into a philosoph philosophical debate. <laughs> yes. We're starting with Voltaire, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's very difficult to judge, you know. Uh, I hate this position to telling to people, uh, you're in the, you're, it's bad, it's good, and it's, it's terrible. We all try to live in a gray zone. So, uh, I, I mean, um, we are here since uh, 10, 12 days, I, I don't remember exactly. Like four. Uh, four, it's, well, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, yeah, there is, uh, there are some differences between the U.S. and France, and uh, that's very interesting. That uh, that for French people to know how uh, American people uh, works, uh, the, the in terms of culture and uh, of freedom of speech and the uh, difference between freedom of speech and law, and uh, uh, so you have the, the, your issues are sometimes the same, but the way you settle them, you know, are very different. I think it's very interesting. So if from a French point perspective, we say you have to publish the, this cover, of course it's easy for us to say that, you know, because, but uh, in one week or in one month you could return us the compliment and saying uh, uh, you could uh, do uh, something we do and you don't do that for that reason, you know what I mean, there are different cultural landscape and uh, we have to be very comprehensive and respectful of that. I mean, the question of, we have seen that for uh, maybe uh, two weeks, that the question of laïcité, for example, is something very important for us, French people, uh, this sort of, uh, uh, you know, secularism, this sort of space uh, when we can all live together, whatever we are, black, Muslim, Buddhist, uh, bold, uh, you know, dwarf, whatever, you name it. But uh, that, that's the common space. And uh, it's important to preserve the life 
inside the limit of this common space. And outside of this space, you have your private life. And this private life include uh, uh, religious, uh, you know, your conviction, your religious conviction. In the US, this question of laicite, you know, what we call la république, the republic, it's... Um, it's very different. You don't have that, in fact. Uh, I remember uh, this French philosopher named Tocqueville when he wrote De la Democracy in America. He was, uh, 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 it was f during one of his first uh, trip in, in, in the US. It was way before plane flight and Twitter, so it was something new for him. I mean, when he was in the US, he don't see Nike and Zara and H&M everywhere. Anyway. And Tocqueville uh, wrote two wonderful volumes about the uh, America, and, but it's a French point of view of, uh, on the US society. And uh, he was fascinating by, by uh, what he called the science of association. You know, how you deal, uh, you know, um, uh, fact after facts and uh, issue after issue between the association. That's the, the secret of the American, for him, culture was the way of dealing with different interests, different community, because all the American people, almost all the American people, came at one moment from another, you know. In France, it's very, very different, because uh, when... To be French, it's not like to be American, you know? Uh, we have this, uh, in France, this idea of uh, uh, be born in France, for example. It's, uh, you know, a sort of hierarchy. That's the reason we have so racism, you know, in France. You have uh, uh, the, the extreme right wing, uh, one of the, the president of the, the Front National. It's one our devil, but we are laughing at this devil. It's the Front National, you know? And she was in New York two weeks ago because she, uh, the Time magazine decided she was one of the most uh, the, uh, uh, she, she was part of the, the hundred most uh, influential person on this planet, you know? It's quite depressing, yes. Mind mind it's quite depressing for us, you know, to, to, to see that. I mean, uh, uh, and, the, and the, the Pope was far beyond, you know? And uh, so, that, I mean, we have to, uh, uh, more than judging, you know, uh, French people, Italian people, Chinese people, first we have to understand how it works in their own country. You know, and um, it's part of the, I think, of the comprehension, you know, and uh, of the thinking, you know. Uh, judging is okay when you have all the tools in your mind to judge. The, and uh, we see so many people judging in very uh, fast way, you know. It's always silly, you know. Um, you have to, to, ref to, to think first. And when you think, you can see that all, all the things can be understood and uh, are not... Uh, disres disrespectful, you know, and uh, you, you can, when you can understand something, you're not afraid of it anymore. That's, uh, you know, uh, when, when you go back to the prehistoric uh, area, uh, you were afraid of the unknown, you know, you were afraid of because uh, uh, a guy was uh, taller than you, you know. Um, I think we evolved. I mean, the, the fear is a, is a sort of uh, uh, um, the, um, uh, the, it's the silence of the brain. You know, you have to use your brain. When your brain is on, everything is okay. When your brain is off, and when people are trying to, be, to put your brain off, you know, saying that this cartoon is very offensive, you should protest against this cartoon, you should burn this fl the French flag because of, uh, no, you're just exploiting the stupidity of the people, and you, you have to uh, uh, elevate the people. That's, uh, I think, that's, uh, the more important task we have by love, by writing, by uh, singing, by uh, making movies, anyway, you, you have to put the people up and not to put the people down. That's very important, I think. Thank you. Then to the first question. Um, I'm a Muslim woman. I'm not personally offended by any of your cartoons. However, you spoke of universal values. I am sure we agree equal in dignity is a universal value. In fact, the founding value of UNDHR. I support the right to free speech. But is freedom of expression an end in itself? I think because of images like these, I am not seen as being equal in dignity. Do you see a clash in values? Um. The thing is, well, when we um, when we make a cartoon uh, of uh, of Prophet Muhammad or uh, Jesus or uh, Moses, we don't uh, we don't mock or uh, attack people. Uh, we mock or attack uh, institutions. 
uh, representatives, uh, powers, uh, and uh, again political powers. Uh, it's not. It's not. Uh, you have. You have not. I think you have not to be offended as as believer. Whatever your belief is, whatever your religion is, you have not to be offended by uh, a, a cartoon or writing or about uh, your uh, about the icon uh, representing you, claiming to represent in you. But it's no nothing can represent you. You're 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 the only one, and uh, um, it's it's just like if. If I was shocked uh, seeing, uh, I don't know, uh, a cartoon about uh, about our president, I'm not. <laughs> if I'm, I'm not at all because uh, I published them. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, it, 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 it's it, it's an old question of um, uh, the 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 right uh, in democracy, the right to attack power. To attack uh, the uh, the the institution, uh, it's it's the the same way with blasphemy. Uh, blasphemy is is not uh, is not innocent. It's not just uh, the the pleasure to uh, to to mock or to insult uh, the uh, I don't know a, a prophet or. A, or uh, a, a religion uh, representant. It's uh, the way you attack the power, the way you attack uh, the, 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 the icon that uh, incarnate the, the, this power. This, uh, or it, it, it could be a religion, it could be a, it could be a political party, it could be a, a country, anything. So if you don't have this uh, this right, if 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 you can't uh, if you can't uh, challenge the power, if you can contest the power, uh, you're not uh, anymore in democracy. And uh, the thing is, uh, ev all believers uh, commit blasphemy. It's uh, it's it's just uh, it's a reflex. You know, uh, 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 all believers say, for God's sakes, for uh, fucking God or what, what else, you know. Uh, I, I'm half Italian. I'm half Italian. If, if you're going to Italy, uh, uh, every corner of the street, you, 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 you hear people, Porca Madonna, puta madre. This is, in the, this is Spanish, but. Uh, <laughs> I don't want. Porca Madonna is in Italian. <laughs> Puta madre is Spanish. <laughs> so it's um, it's 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 the way uh, things are must go. You know, it's uh, it's it's the only thing. It's the only way you can uh, you can be uh, a citizen. Uh, it's it's uh, defying. It's challenging. It's uh, contesting uh, the power. Uh, it's uh, it's debate after all. Blasphemy is just debate. Thanks. And then the next question, which could really go to any of you, um, as promoters of freedom of expression and unapologetic humor, what are your thoughts on Dieudonné, who you referenced in your presentation, and the ban on his shows in France for being anti-Semitic? So, <clears throat> well, since I, I brought it up, maybe I'll. Say, I'm I'm opposed to. The, the, the limits that exist in France on free speech. And I find the things that Jude Donnet says detestable, obnoxious, but, um, but I also find it strange that he can be arrested, slapped with fines, jailed for the, the comments that, that he makes, as obnoxious as they are. And I, I think that there are a number of forms of obnoxious, horrible speech that are banned in France that should not be. And that goes back 
And I'll say something that maybe is controversial, but that goes back to, to 1990 when, the, when Holocaust denial was made illegal. And then about 10 years after that, the, any, any effort to um, belittle the, the gravity of slavery and the slave trade and to suggest that those things were not crimes against humanity, that too is illegal. And I think that because there are these forms of detestable speech that are criminalized in France, it makes it difficult for some people to understand the distinctions that allow you to publish the images of Mohammed that you do, but that don't allow Dieu donné to say the things that he says. Yes, you're right. Just, just one word. You, you, you're right about this, um, but I'm, uh, I will tell just... Um, I, it, it's just my own opinion. It's uh, so you, you can Jean Baptiste can say it's uh, self censorship, but I, I I really make a difference uh, between uh, contesting or marking uh, a religion, uh, uh, an institution, and uh, contesting the death of six million peoples to me to me it, the, the whole difference is 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 here but i'm i'm agree uh, uh, prohibiting is not the solution uh, the solution is debate Maybe. but uh, but there is a difference for me between these two uh, these, these two things you know between uh, drawing a profit and uh, uh, pretending that uh, gas chamber never existed. It's it, it's not the same. Uh, it's not the same level well, to a me. Phrase. Um, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion, but you're not entitled to your own facts. I think that may be what you're kind of getting at. But I have to say, I really agree uh, on this because I think it is. You know, it's not something that would ever be accepted in the United States. It would be unconstitutional to try to ban. Holocaust denial, and it really, it makes the argument, you know, I think much harder, because it's not really a level playing field, and yes, you can understand it historically, and you know, this is where we get back to the prism, you know, you have a prism where, you know, that kind of looks differently to you, um, and we all, you know, come at these things, uh, you know, based on our own background uh, and experience, but I think, you know, as a legal matter, when you're trying to create societies where everybody feels, uh, you know, it's, it really is equal opportunity uh, offense and equal opportunity expression, I think a law like that has no place. I'm right with this, okay. And, uh, but uh, I speak for myself and uh, I'm totally agree with that. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, uh, Dieudonné, the, this guy Dieudonné, uh, has been a very funny guy and, and very uh, talented guy uh, uh, maybe 10 years ago. You know, and he was uh, regarded uh, like, uh, as that. You know, as a very uh, one of the best uh, human people we had in France. And suddenly, the guy became uh, what he became, and uh, and uh, he, he has been uh, suited, and he get, he get to court, and uh, and he has been condemned, and for all the reason uh, you, you you say about anti-Semitism, etc. Bon. But in the eighties in France, you had a guy I remember his name was Pierre Desproges. Mm -hmm. He was saying incredibly awful things on the on the uh, the Jewish people, and especially about the Holocaust. Uh, that's it's interesting because it's uh, back to 80, 84, 85. Uh, two days, I, I'm not sure that the, the, this guy, uh, and ne nobody never suspects Pierre Desproches to be an anti Semite, to be a racist guy, of course. Uh, nobody, and at that time, it was okay. It was a little offending, but it was part of the humor and the part of the thrill of the humor to be a little offended. But uh, I'm not sure that 30 years. Uh, after that, Pierre Desproges could say this kind of things. I mean that the French society has changed uh, uh, in, uh, um, uh, with this kind of issues. And I am totally, for, for me, it's uh, one of, uh, of uh, very weak points is this question of uh, not permitted some kind of uh, speeches to go into, into the public space. Uh, because, first of all, you see that all the political figures which would try uh, 
uh, all the people or writer or essayists who try to explain the reason Dieudonné was banned and another one wasn't, it's failed. It's all, all, if, you, if you're honest with yourself, if you're uh, intellectually honest, it's very hard to explain to people the, 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 the reason this guy is uh, condemned and this guy is not, first of all. So you, you, you know, you're, 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 you're lighting, you know, uh, the, the, you, you, you're creating your own trap, you know? Um, and secondly, uh, I think that, okay, you can ban uh, some speeches and some words and so from the public space. But does that mean that these speeches, these thoughts, uh, are going to disappear? No. What's happened to this kind of thoughts? They are going underground, and they are going on the internet, they are going on Twitter, they are going on a, a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, a sort of uh, a bad free press, if you want. And. Um, at, uh, at the, the, uh, the time of uh, Dieudonné, all, all the debate about Dieudonné uh, a few years ago, I remember that a lot of uh, journalists from, the, from uh, some institutional t television uh, discovered that uh, on YouTube, uh, the video of Dieudonné, and uh, he has been banned from TV, no, t TV, no more show for him, he was, uh, he was banned from the, you know, the, the TV landscape. But uh, it was not a problem for him because he found on the internet a powerful tool, an even more powerful tool, and uh, all his videos, uh, and you, have, you had at that time two, three millions of views, much more than television. Um, and uh, the, the, the after the, the, the ironic effect of that is first you're banning some speeches from the public space, you make them grow elsewhere, and uh, at what moment is what uh, the, uh, the psychoanalyst calls, you know, the return of the repressed, and it's very dangerous when you repress something, at what moment this so repress is going back into your face and splattered everybody. That's the first problem. And secondly, uh, you make uh, the young people are look, um, uh, um, uh, very uh, vivid users of the internet. And uh, for them, the, uh, that's a real problem we have, uh, I think, in France and in the US too, considering all the conspiracy theory thing. I mean, for a lot of young viewers, the truth is on the internet. And the, all the institutional t uh, uh, media, newspaper, New York Times, CNN, Fox News, quoique. Fox News is another thing, uh, but let's take uh, Fox News uh, out of the, the debate. No, it's funny, I mean, uh, you, uh, love but Fox News. you love Fox News. You love Fox News. I like Fox News. But um, I mean, uh, uh, for a lot of people now, and we have to think about the, the next generation, the truth is on the internet, is underground. So uh, you, you are, you, you, we, we should be uh, very vigilant you know, with this kind of evolution. And I absolutely agree with you. Uh, if you want to contest, to fight an ID, you have to let this ID express in the public space. So, so again, the best thing is using your brain, uh, uh, your, your bright brain, you know, against a damaged brain. If you say to this brain, no, no, you know, you're not allowed to this, to, to this part of the room, uh, I think it's the beginning of the end. It's very, very dangerous. And uh, again, maybe in 10 years, uh, we'll, uh, because how do you fix the line? It's impossible yeah. to fix. Um, many people have asked that for you to speak, and this kind of goes along with this, what uh, the line is between you and what Pamela Geller was doing this week and her group um, in the controversy surrounding that. Uh, well, first, first of all, we, we don't do contests. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we just do our work. Uh, our job, uh, our job is to comment uh, the news uh, when uh, Prophet Muhammad or Islam is jump, jumping out of the news. We comment it, and uh, we the, the the difference between us and these people, and it's that these people uh, are organizing contest, anti-Islamist contest. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's an obsession. We don't have this obsession. Uh, out of uh, 500 covers uh, we made this, uh, during these 10 years, only seven was about uh, Prophet Muhammad. So all, all the, all the old 
covers all the others, covers was about uh, French politics, most of all French politics, uh, extreme right uh, wing, and other religions, mostly Catholics, uh, because we have a, a lot of problems in France with that. So uh, we are not obsessed. Uh, we are just obsessed by uh, the news and by the, how the world is uh, going on. Uh, the difference with uh, pa Pamela Geller, it's, it's, uh, she is obsessed by uh, Islam. And uh, she, she's, uh, she wakes every morning and uh, she <laughs> thinks about what, what can I do today to, uh, to, de to, to defy these uh, this people? Well, I'm, no, I'm not. I'm, uh, when I'm awake, I'm like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm going to have a coffee. <laughs> but uh, may, uh, maybe there is, a, in fact, comparing uh, this uh, Pamela Geller thing and Charlie Hebdo is just nonsense. You know, it's, uh, if you're thinking one second, there is nothing to do. It's, uh, uh, an, uh, it's an anti-Islamic movement, and she, uh, she said so. It's an anti-Islamic movement fighting against what she called, uh, I, I have heard that yesterday, the Islamization of the US, you know. I, 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 maybe there is just one thing in common, that uh, you, 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 you can't mess with Texas, but you can mess with Charlie Hebdo, you know. That for me is the, the unique But we don't point. shoot people. But we don't shoot people, uh, absolutely. I think we have time for one more question. Um, do you think that this controversy reveals an important difference between visual and verbal expression? You spoke to this a little bit, but um, do images have this special power to shock and offend that words can't have? Of course, and um, um, for, me, for me the main problem, and I think uh, Jean-Baptiste will agree, it's that uh, we live in a world of images. Uh, you, you, a child today is, uh, see images before he see before he see words uh, he, he is uh, he is uh, 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 dipped in uh, in a, in a world of images and he can't he can't read him he can read this these images we're not we're not uh, uh, educated to read uh, all the images the we w surround us uh, the main the, the the main issue the main uh, is 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 to have this image education it's n how can uh, if you if you if you see all these covers uh, you saw uh, of charlie hebdo uh, there is always a counter uh, a context there's always a, um, a comment uh, upon the 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 cartoon, uh, it's it's never uh, it's it's never free, it's never uh, gratuit, you know. Uh, sorry, okay. Uh, so <laughs> so um, the 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 problem is uh, how can we uh, how can we uh, go on? Uh, thinking if we don't if we don't if we are not able to understand what we are looking at uh, and what we are looking at are mostly images uh, on TV on uh, advertising everywhere uh, we are surrounded by av advertising most of people don't know even understand what it means on uh, on all these uh, these images, uh, and to add something to, uh, to uh, what just says Gerard, it's uh, it's very in interesting because uh, the problem we have uh, we have with cartoon is part of a larger problem we have with images in general. Uh, it's uh, fascinating, I think, to see how uh, we are absolutely surrounded by images. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, the, the, the people are the, maybe, um, it's, it's hard to say, but uh, they have the more and more difficulties to understand the images. 
I'm teaching movies at the French university, and I can tell you that uh, a lot of my students were, I've seen uh, th thousands of movies, but if I am showing to them just a sequence, you know, a few minutes of a film, it's, very, it's become very hard for them to understand the, the single image, you know? That's uh, maybe one of the greatest challenge we have, and it's not just concerning the cartooning, it's just concerning all the, all the image everywhere. Uh, how to uh, stop say, uh, being, uh, uh, you know, simple consumers? and uh, starting to think about the images. And the question of the education uh, is, is absolutely crucial in France. Maybe that's a, the, the biggest and the, the most intelligent we answer we are expecting for our government to take that absolutely seriously, you know? And uh, you have now to, uh, to uh, let uh, all the, 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 the children and uh, the young students to educate themselves and uh, you have to teach them what is uh, the history of the images and uh, the uh, fixy paintings and uh, cartoons and movies. And uh, uh, that's very, I, I think, maybe it's the, the key of uh, our future. You know what I mean? Uh, it's um, the way of uh, understanding uh, the, the image today, you know? Great. Thank you guys so much. I know you have to continue your grand tour, as you called it, on a tight schedule. But thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.